This video is likely to start out a little bit confusing, um, but stay with me. Um, it's a really, really, really awesome thing. Um, the, the thing that I'm covering right now is absolutely critical, absolutely crucial um, for the AP exam, and we're going to do more practice with this in the coming days. Um, it is something that's tested on the IB exam. I don't think it's quite as critical, um, but it's, it's definitely an important thing. So the first thing I need to quickly review with you is what is the fundamental theorem of calculus. The fundamental theorem of calculus was the one that said that if you take the integral from a to b of f of x dx, it just means you take the antiderivative, so let's say it's big F, you plug in the top number minus plug in the bottom number. And, and that's it. That's the fundamental theorem of calculus. Right? The way that I'm going to use that for kinematics is, is this. It, it, it's basically this idea. Suppose that somebody asked you to take the integral from a to b of v of t dt. We would know that that's equal to the position at time b minus the position at time a. And so, in fact, what this leads us to, and you can actually think about it this way, if you were to move the P of A over to the other side, you'd end up with this statement. You'd end up with the position at time B is equal to the position at time A plus the integral from A to B of V of T dt. And like I said, I suspected that this was going to be confusing from the beginning. This is all just letters and things. Um, but 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 keep your brain turned on. Let me try and explain this, right? What this statement here, what this amazing statement here says is it says, if you want to know the position at time B, take the position at time A, something that you presumably already know, and add on to that the integral from A, the thing you know, to time B, the thing that you want to know of the velocity function. Um, I'm going to outline sort of the, the steps or the guidelines for that in the next slide, and then after that I'm going to go right into an example of this. So let's take a look. So the, the key ideas to using this fundamental theorem of calculus for solving problems, one, it tends to be used when you're given the graph of a derivative or a derivative function that you can't take the integral of by hand. So this tends to be on calculator problems or on graph problems. Um, the second key idea is that you'll always be given you'll always be given one value of the original function and asked for another. So what this step here means is they'll tell you something like, oh, you know, the position at time three is seventeen. You know, what is the position at time five? Or they'll say, you know, the velocity at time seven is three. What is the initial velocity? This is always going to hinge on one of those two ideas. And the idea is that when you're, you know, in, in step three, when you set up an integral, you're going to set it up using the two x values referenced in the previous step. So you're going to use three and five on your integral. On this one, you're going to use seven and zero on your integral. Right? Now some of you may be looking at this one weird, going like, wait a minute, shouldn't those be reversed? Uh, not really. I'll get into that in, in the example problem. So let's let's take a look at this. Um, a particle moves along the x-axis with a velocity given by that thing, t cubed cosine of t squared. If you know that x of 3 equals 7, use your calculator to find the initial position of the object. So the first I want to say, you know, why can't we use the previous lesson for this? Why can't we just say, you know, why don't I just do the integral of t cubed cosine t squared and you know put a plus c on the end of it and the answer is I have no clue how to do this integral by hand like it's gonna be ridiculous this is not going to work because I can't do this by hand I can't do this in the traditional method where we just find some value of c instead I'm gonna use the fundamental theorem of calculus I'm gonna say you know I want to know I want to know what x of 0 is. x of 0 should be x of 3, the position at 3, plus the integral from 3 to 0. Now, I said in the previous slide, some of you may be worried that I wrote this integral backwards, like, oh, you know, isn't the smaller number always supposed to go on the bottom? Not always. You can write your integral to be whatever you want. And in this case, 
the way these problems are always set up is that the thing that you know goes here and also shows up here. So whatever number you're putting here goes here. And you can sort of think about it the way that I said in, in the previous slide. x of 0 is x of 3 plus the integral from 3 up to whatever we want to get. And then this is going to be v of t dt. And keep in mind that v of t is this thing. So perhaps I should have even just written that there. Um, you know, the, the velocity function that I'm working with is t cubed cosine of t squared dt. And so now what I'm doing is I'm literally just using my calculator. I'm just saying, okay, x of 3 was 7 plus this integral done on the calculator is negative 0 0.899 and so that means my position at time 0 is 7 plus that, which is 6.101. And that is the initial position of the object. Okay? Um, I'm, I'm kind of inclined to write down another one of these, like on, on this same slide, and then give you one of them to try it if you've got a calculator at home. Um, if you don't have a calculator at home, I'd say at least set up what it should look like and sort of think through what the steps would be so that you can try it on your own. Um, I'm, I'm not prepared for this one, uh, so I'm just going to sort of write down another option. So, so the idea here is that I want to use the same t same function. So the same v of t is t cubed cosine t squared. Um, this time you're going to be given that the position at time 5 is 17, and I want you to find the position at time, let's say, 7. So like I said, if, if you've got your calculator at home, actually solve this problem. If you don't, at least set up what the thing should look like. All right. So from my perspective, I'm looking at this saying they want x of 7. So x of 7 is, that's the thing I want, is x of 5 plus the integral from 5 to 7. Remember that the number that goes on the bottom should match with the thing here, which I recommend being the thing that you know, of the velocity function, which we said was t cubed cosine of t squared. So x of 7 is x of 5, which was 17, plus this integral. I'm going to pause the video and, and do this integral on the side and then bring the answer back to us. And the integral I ended up with for this was negative 22.05 8. And so that means that our position at time 7 is, uh, let's see here, negative 5.058. Okay? So I hope that one made sense. This is how we use the calculator to do these problems. Um, I would say the calculator version of this problem is more common on the AP exam. Um, the graph version of it is common on the AP exam, but I think is the version that's more likely to show up on the IB exam. Um, so let's look at this last example that I have. So here we go. A a an object moves along a straight line with a velocity given by the function graph below. So this thing is the velocity function. If the position of the object at time 3 is 12, find the position of the object at time 9. So notice I've got a similar setup here, right? They're telling me the position of the object at time 3, and they want to know the position of the object at time 9. So I would say even just based on that, you should know what you need to write in terms of an integral expression, right? I know this time they didn't, quote, give you the velocity function. They didn't just straight up say, oh, v of t equals such and such. It's a really ugly t. I apologize for that. But they did give you a velocity function. We're just going to have to use the graph to take the integral. So pause the video, write down what the integral, what the setup should be for this problem, right? So what it should be is it should be x of 9 equals, and if you didn't pause the video and do it, pause it now. I started off telling you that you're going to start with x of 9. Why do we start with this? We start with this because that's the thing we want to know. 
The next thing is supposed to be, if you haven't paused yet, now's your chance, should be x of 3, because that's the thing they told me. Right? That's this value up here. They told me the position at time 3 was 12. And what do I add on to this? We add on the integral from the value we know, which is 3, up to the value we want to know, which is 9, of the velocity function. Right? And so our, our sort of our, our next step here is to say, you know, we know what x of 3 is. It's 12. Right? So I can... I can sort of plug in x of 9 equals 12 plus whatever this integral is. And because we're not given a function, like I said, I'm going to have to rely on the graph. right? I'm going to need to look at the area between 3 and 9. right? So it's now your job to sort of process this thing and figure out what this area is. And I know it's been a little while since we've done these, but hopefully you guys remember the idea of breaking things into geometric figures. Um, so again, this is a great place to pause the video, look at this, and see if you can remember how to, how to compute this integral. Um, if you haven't paused yet because you need a hint, um, you could think of this as a rectangle, this as a triangle, and this as another triangle. So, you know, think about that idea. And again, pause the video, figure it out on your own. I see this first rectangle here as being four units tall and one unit wide. That means that thing has an area of four. I see this next triangle as having a height of four and a base of two. So if I do one half base times height, that's also an area of four. This guy here seems to have a height of two and a base of three. So given the whole one-half base times height business, um, we're looking at this being an area of three. But the thing you need to remember is that when you're computing an, an area like this, when you're computing an integral, rather, I'm sorry, when you're computing an integral, area that's above the x-axis is counted as positive, and area below the x-axis is counted as negative. So overall, this integral here is 4 plus 4 minus 3, because part of that area is under the axis. So now we just compute this thing out. x of 9 is 20 minus 3 is 17. Um, I hope that one made sense. I could go through another example of it, but, but really these problems are all about getting the setup. Putting the thing you want to know here, putting the thing you already know here, setting up the integral properly, and then either using your calculator to do the integral or using a graph to compute the integral. Um, sorry this video was a little bit longer than I wanted, but hopefully that all made sense and is stuck in your minds. Um, if you've got time and energy left, I'd say start the homework, look at a couple of problems, make sure you can do it on your own. I'll see you in class.